What is up guys, Tim Murray here. Today we're going to be looking at quite possibly one of the most versatile guitars in my collection, the Warmoth Telecaster. Before this video starts, I want you to comment down below how you would spec out your own DIY guitar. I love talking about gear, and this also gives me a few ideas for another build at some point. Hehe. <laughs> I'll also note here that I'm not sponsored by Warmoth at all, so everything in this video is purely my opinion based on fantastic service that I've received from them. Warmoth, if you wish to sponsor me, you know where I am. So you guys have probably seen this guitar already as it has already been in three of my previous videos. So while I'll have a quick tone demo showcasing the different settings during this video, you'll get the best idea of what this sounds like from my other videos. There will be plenty of links in the description to these videos. So jumping right in, this is my second DIY build and also my second DIY build with Warmoth. Warmoth are a company based in Washington in the United States where they create licensed Fender replacement parts along with a few of their own creations. These parts can be fully customized to your exact specifications with a lot of different options to choose from. However, you can also view their in-stock inventory to see any pre-made bodies or necks ready to buy. Cool thing here is in-stock parts are mostly left blank in regards to pickup routing, bridge routing and frets. This means that you can buy from the in-stock page and you'll still have a bit of freedom with some of your part selections. I did this with my bass guitar where I added gold jumbo frets to this beautiful neck. This Telecaster was also from the in-stock inventory with the body pre-routed for two single coil pickups. I had this modified by Warmoth to have a humbucker routing in the bridge and also a battery box on the back. The body itself is made from swamp ash and it has a surf green gloss finish. The neck is made from flame maple with a flame maple fretboard. The price of these are set based on the quality of the maple, so I went for a relatively cheap one. Even then, there is some really neat figuring in the maple, so I'm very happy with the amount that I spent on it. This of course didn't have any frets installed initially, so I had them install stainless steel jumbo frets. Hardware wise, I ordered most of the parts through Warmoth. The pickguard was from them, and all I had done to it was have the bridge cut out enlarged to fit the humbucker tele style bridge. This bridge is a Goto humbucker tele style bridge for those that are wondering. I also bought Sharla locking tuners, which I actually ran into an issue with. I went to play it one day and I noticed that the fifth string was a step lower than it should be, so I went to tune it up to pitch, and it went down. The tuner then got really tight and wouldn't even move, so immediately I contacted the guys at Warmoth via email. Within a day, they already had a shipping label created for a replacement part, free of charge with no shipping cost. And this is why I will continue to support them. Not only do they make amazing quality guitars, but their service is outstanding. Now I have no issues with the tuners at all, which is sweet as. I also have Sharla S-Lock strap pins, which is the same as on my Warmoth bass build and my fretless 6-string bass. These strap pins will find themselves onto my other guitar shortly, they're great. Now moving on to the electronics. So how many pickups does this guitar have? Well, technically, it has eight. The neck pickup is a bare knuckle pickups flat 50 single coil pickup. This gives a real smooth vintage style tone which provides a bit of flexibility when paired with the bridge pickup. The bridge pickup is also from bare knuckle, however it is a Rabia Massard signature silo humbucker. Mine is customised to be a 53mm pole spacing for Fender style guitars or guitars with tremolo bridge systems, and I got it in a covered black finish with black bolt pole screws. It is also the 4 conductor wiring model so it allows me to coil split the pickup and get a thinner twangy sound. I do this by using the push-pull switch on the volume pop. Now these pickups sound fantastic. However, there are a few small things I'd like to change at some point. The neck pickup and split coil bridge pickup mode drop in volume a fair bit compared to the high output of the silo in humbucking mode. This is to be expected, but it is a bit of a noticeable jump, especially when I'm using a harder noise gate setting. I wonder if using a 5-way switch to access the coil splitting would be worth it instead, as then I could add a stacked potentiometer for the individual bridge and neck pickup volumes. Either way, it's not a huge problem, so I'd only do that if I got really bored. 
Now the split coil mode has a lot of high end, which is only a small problem as this guitar has a 500k potentiometer for the volume and it doesn't actually have a tone knob. I can still just apply a filter in Ableton and get the result I want anyway, it just might be a bit fiddly if I wanted to use this with a hardware amplifier. So if this doesn't have a tone knob, then what the hell does this extra second knob do? Well, that's where the extra six pickups come in. This guitar is fitted with a Graftec acoustophonic system with piezo saddles in the bridge. This is where the guitar gets hella technical. The piezo system is designed to get an acoustic sound out of your guitar by using piezo crystals in the bridge to pick up string vibrations. These crystals are tiny and quite sensitive, hence the need to have six individual pickups in each saddle. These saddles then run into a preamp circuit which then increases the signal strength and then gives you a few extra controls. For those wondering how I fit the circuit board in a guitar with such a tiny cavity, I used a Dremel tool to route out a square cavity under the pickguard. I then routed a small channel to get the cable snake through to the main cavity. This was my second time ever using a Dremel, so safe to say, the cheeks were clenched. However, I got the result I wanted and actually did a relatively clean job on it. So, the knob in place of the toe knob is just the volume control for the piezo system, with a push-pull to switch between two different set EQ curves, one brighter and one darker with a bit more low end. Next to this is a switch which flicks between piezo pickups only, piezo and magnetic pickups, and magnetic pickups only. This is where things get really awesome. So this guitar has only one jack socket here, however this jack is a special type of stereo jack included with the Graftec system. If you plug a regular guitar cable, i.e. this mono TS jack into it, the piezo and magnetic will be blended together and will flow down the same cable into channel 1 of your audio interface. But if you plug in a stereo cable like this TRS stereo to dual TS mono cable, the magnetic pickups get sent through channel 1, and the piezo get sent through to channel 2. This means I can literally have two completely separate signal chains for the magnetic and piezo pickups, which I can then turn on and off with the switch on the guitar. How frickin' awesome is that? I could actually take this build one step further simply by adding a Graftec MIDI board to the piezo system. This would mean that I could control my synthesizers or Ableton Live with my guitar, as well as having piezo and magnetic pickups on board. However, this was going to be too expensive due to needing a Roland multi-effects pedal or a discontinued Axon converter to even get it into Ableton. I also wasn't prepared to add another cavity under the pickguard or also adding another jack hole for the GK port. I still love the idea of a synth guitar build, however, I'll stick with this for now. It'll probably be alright. Now only negatives I have regarding this build, I accidentally chipped the paint near the bridge pickup when drilling a larger hole through the main cavity. I don't know if you can see that here. Yeah, just a little bit there. Very minor and it gets mostly covered by the bridge piece anyway. And also you may see that there is some black electrical tape between the saddles and the bridge pickup here. This is just to cover up the wires from the piezo saddles. If I really wanted to, I could drill a hole through the bridge piece and then route a tiny cable channel to the bridge pickup route, which would allow me to run the cables under the bridge, concealing them. However, the piezo system was an absolute bitch to install myself, and I'm just not prepared to do that all again in the immediate future. I'm still scarred to this day. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy this kind of content. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and have a wonderful day. Timmy out.